thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to do a follow-up from the first video of the year, which was AI image matting. And I'm going to show you how I actually use the masks that are created via the software. So let's dive right in. A few people had asked how you actually use the masks. So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques and how to use the masks. And the masks are really good with AI matting that it creates. But yes, you do have to do some work. Like some of the hair here has been drawn in by hand along with a tablet. Uh, but you can get really, really distinct masks and really refined masks. So I'm going to show you with a few images, just different methods and how to use them. So what I'm going to do is I have these three masks here. I have the mask, the cutout, I have the green screen background, and I also have the mask that's created. Now, what we want to do is we want to drag these in as smart objects. So I'm just going to move this to the side just here so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to hold down control and select the second one, and I'm going to drag them on. Now, you'll see the mask appears first. Just click OK. And then the cutout appears and again, just click OK. So we have this, but that there should be here. So I'm going to show you a few ways in how I've been doing this. So you'll notice down here that I have channels selected and what I'm going to do is turn off that so is that we have this here. Yes, there's a few discrepancies in there, but all in all, most of our work is done and this really speeds up the process. So I'm going to select that layer there. Now it doesn't make a difference here at all. We're just looking for the highest contrast area and most of the time you will find that the blue is the highest contrast area. Most of the time you'll find that. Click on the blue layer and drag it down and drop it and then you've got a blue channel copy. Now this can be edited, and how you edit this is by going into image adjustments, for example, brightness and contrast, levels, curves, and this is just the simple basic ways of doing it. You can actually paint into this as well, but I'll show you the basic ways for this. So right now I'm going to go for levels. And now I can drag that down and you'll see it refines the mask or I can push it further and you'll notice that it opens it up even further. Right, we'll click cancel on that. So I can use that there. Go back into image adjustments. Let's go for curves. Just to see how curves affects this one. You'll notice that if I use the curves, it refines it down here. And I can push the whites and drag them back. So you can do and use any of these methods, but how do you get that as a mask? This is what I'm just going to show you now. So if I can do that and then I can extend it, I'm gonna drag the blacks back. And now I know it's not going to be perfect, but that's not bad at all. So this is method one, click OK. Now, if we hover over the blue copy and hold down control, I can select that. And if I go back into my layers up here, you'll notice that I have a selection applied. And then I simply go on here and I click the mask button. And it's applied the mask in there. If I turn that off, you'll see that that's applied the mask. Yes, it's not exactly perfect, but believe me, the time that that saves is really, really good. So from here, I can then start dropping in backgrounds and editing it, and it allows my workflow to move much faster. So I'm just going to drop that behind, and we can't even see it. And I'll just move that. So there, I can put that there. I can move it all around. So that's one method of doing it. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first image, 
hold down control, take the second image, drop them onto your document and then just click OK and then click OK. So now this one is really quite straightforward if you see that. That is really quite straightforward. There's a couple of bits in there. But again, I wouldn't waste my time trying to refine that. I would just be looking for an easy method to create a mask from this. So this second method is very simple. Go in, take the object selection tool, draw around the object. The selection's made, as you see. Go up onto your document, turn that one off, click mask. And there you go, the mask's created. That's how simple this is. And now with each one that you do, there will be different methods. The third method I'm going to show you is using the actual base image. So if I drop that on there, we have that. So that's the base image. If I then repeat the process by bringing in the mask, clicking OK, and then bringing in the cutout by clicking OK. And I've just dragged them in. So as you see, they've come in as smart objects. And you notice that they will all match up. So if your images are different sizes, you will have to scale them to make them the same size for this method to work. So here we have the original image, which is OK because that is a grey flat background. What I can do is I can go in to this layer here and again I'm going to go down, I'm going to delete that blue copy because that's remained in this document. I've just worked in the same document for this tutorial. So as you can see I can take any one of these. I'm just looking for the highest contrast one and I'm going to show you a different method that you can employ to do this. Now this may not work with every image, but at least you've learned a different method. So I'm going to drag that down and copy that one up. This time in this blue copy, I'm going to go into image adjustments and I'm going to adjust the curve slightly. So that's following method one. I'm just going to tighten that up, just darken it down because the more I darken that down, you'll see what happens. So I do that. And then I can push the white and I can do that. But for example, if I want to refine some of this, I can then paint on this. If I take the brush and I paint in black, you notice it's going over there, right? My opacity is only at eight. So I'm going to paint that out. So that will remove this area from the mask if I select it. But what we have to do now is we have to go up in here and change the, the brush setting to overlay. Now you can take that down to whatever you want to work with or in this case, I'm just going to leave it at 100%. So if I zoom in here and I'm on the brush with the setting overlay, watch what happens to the black. It fills it in. Now, if I try to paint on the white, you'll notice that it is, it is struggling to do it because the brush setting is at overlay. But again, I can go in here and I can refine this. That's when I would start to take these down, the opacity and the flow. But you can see what this can do and it can actually help create and refine masks whether you've used AI Matte or not. So that is working with the channels and a brush and working in here. So I'm going to change this to white to let you see what happens. So I can do that and I can paint in there at that percentage. Now this is brilliant for trees. It's absolutely brilliant for branches of trees. And you notice there, I'm getting a few mistakes, but it's beginning to bring back some of the hairs in between, but yet it's not painting on the black. Now you would go in and really refine this. I'm just going to quickly paint over this. Now, the more you paint, for example, nothing's happening, but the more I paint in the white, the more I can fill in where the pixels are just slightly merging. 
So you can see the benefits of this, and this again is using channels to do this. So I'm just going to very quickly zoom out. I'm just going to go in here and paint just like that, up there, down there. My suggestion to you is though, take your time when you're doing this, if you want to get it as best as you possibly can. So we have that. I'm just going to leave it at that. You'll see that this is quite a mess, especially in there. But what we can do then is go down to the blue copy, hold down control. It selects it, as you can see. I'll turn everything off except for the grey background. I'll go back up to that and I'm in layers now. And then I'll just go down to the mask button and apply the mask. Now you can see that it's not perfect, and especially with hair. Nine times out of ten, when it is hair, I will go in and I will refine that by using the tablet and painting on different values of hair colour to blend it back in. But again, I can bring a background in, and let's just find another background to drag in. So I'll drag that in there, Star Wars background just to let you see the effect and drag it to the bottom. So you can see again that that blends that in. And it works relatively well. It just depends on the type of image that you are using and that you are doing. Now, the other thing I'd like to point out, I'm going to knock this out of focus slightly. Filter, blur, and let's go for a Gaussian blur. Let's just take it out a wee bit more than that, just so that our main focus is on her. Parts of the hair missing there and the bottom of the image is missing here. And that's simply because we've dropped them all on at the same size. If you are doing this, I'll just drag that to the bottom, but it can be done in any way whatsoever. I am just going to simply select that layer, Command or Control and P, and scale it up. And scale it up. Now she fills the entire image. So these images that I have here that I'm about to show you, these were all created using one of those methods that I've just shown you. For example, the girl in there, she's combined together up here, but the girl in there. And you can see where I've painted on the hair to make the difference, as well as the sword. The sword was cut out as well. And that's in there. And so that image there was created using AI image matting and the processes that I've just showed you. Same with this here. Now, this was a quite a big one. This is 96 layers, I think it was, in total. And every part of this was cut out using that method as well. So we've got quite a few in here. Egypt, the gods of Egypt one, again. The good thing about it is I can create the image, cut it out while I'm still working on the main image, waiting until it's ready and then bring it in. As you can see here, you can see I've changed the aspect ratio, but that's the mask I created, again, using one of those methods. Same with the Superman and same with Clash of the Titans. You can see everything there that has been cut out from the background. The sky, of course, isn't. That's just a wee flat. The background in there, the beast, the kraken. Some of these tentacles were cut out. Perseus himself was cut out, the sword and Medusa. So you can see how everything comes together by using that method. You can continue to edit your image while that's happening in the background. Now, a couple of things that I did notice when I was doing this, just for reference sake, a couple of times when I was cutting out buildings, it didn't do the best job. But that's to do with the type of image it was. And I just simply went back in to AI image matting and adjusted some of the settings and then I got a better cut out. And then once it was back in here, where are we? You can see the cut out there. So again, everything's in. You can see everything that's happening with it as well. 
Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see just a very quick way and how you can actually use the masks. Now you've probably figured this out for yourself and there will be other ways that you can do this. So please feel free to put down in the comments below any methods that you've employed that will help other people as well. I've just bought myself a wide angle lens and in this case it is the Sony 16-35PZ G lens, the f4 lens and so probably the next video or couple of videos will be out on location using this because I'm dying to get out just to try it. I haven't shot it at a wide angle in what feels a very long time. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.